insane fact. Simpsons are probably the most influential animated series that ever existed, inspiring inventions like smartwatches, autocorrect or even hamburger earmuffs. However, few people know that behind all the silly humor lies some of the most prodigious mathematical minds of our time, who use the show to bring forward mind-blowing mathematical truths. The first scene of Bart the Genius, the second episode of the first season, shows Maggie stacking her toy cubes to write E equals MC squared, ENC school, with what she has available, but alas, nobody in the family recognizes it. If Einstein's famous equation is too mainstream for you, in the Wizard of Evergreen Terrace Homer, calculates the mass of the Higgs boson 14 years before the LHC detected it, in the episode, he tries to be an inventor like Edison, and on his board we see some mathematical scribblings that are actually profound mathematical ideas. The first one is an equation that calculates the mass of the Higgs boson in 1998. The board contains two more equations and a drawing. The third equation deals with the density of the universe, which has profound consequences on its fate. If T0 is bigger than 1, it would mean that universe will eventually collapse under its gravity and return to a single point. Previously, scientists believed this to be the case, until Einstein discovered the cosmological constant, which is now known as dark matter, that pushes the universe outwards. After an explosion in his laboratory, Homer returns and corrects the equation to prevent further accidents. It turns out that the Simpsons have numerous mathematicians and statisticians who mix humor with their love of mathematics, sneaking in formulas and scientific references that few people would understand. The show has had five writers with multiple university degrees in math, among which are two PhDs. David X. Cohen is an astronomer at Columbia University and one of the writers of The Simpsons. He was a math prodigy from an early age. He often sneaked in bits of his fantastical mathematical discoveries into inconspicuous scenes in the show. One of the greatest mathematical minds of all time, Pierre de Fermat, discovered that if you try Pythagoras's theorem, not by squaring the sides of the triangle, but by cubing them, it won't work. Not only that, he said that no matter what power you multiplied any three numbers, they wouldn't add up like in the image above. Scientists pondered this strange phenomenon for ages and proved mathematically that it was correct. There is even a book called The Devil and Simon Flag, where the devil says to Simon that he could have his soul back if he could solve Fermat's last theorem. Of course, it was impossible. And yet, the second equation on Homer's blackboard shows a correct solution. In the treehouse of horror by Homer falls into the third dimension, where geometric shapes and weird equations whiz by him. In one frame, we can see another solution to Fermat's last theorem. But how can it be correct? Well, it turns out it is a so-called near-miss solution, which means on standard calculators the numbers add up correctly, but on scientific calculators with more than 30 decimal places, you can see that it's not exactly right. There is a fundamental scientific debate about the link between the so-called hard problems and p-type and easy problems p-type. The writers hinted that the two types are the same, like two sides of a coin, and many scientists agree with it. Thus, p equals np, an equation that floats behind Homer in the same treehouse of horror. In the last scene of They Saved Lisa's Brain, Stephen Hawking is fascinated with Homer's idea about the universe. Your theory of a donut-shaped universe is intriguing, I may have to steal it. What appears as a classic joke about Homer's love for donuts is actually the current cosmological model of the universe, known as the Three Taurus model of the universe. It seems like Homer has some profound cosmological knowledge, look at his blackboard above. Since The Simpsons first aired in the era of VHS, the writers slipped in nerdy references that appeared only for a few frames, which were called freeze-frame gags, which allowed the viewers more entertainment.
while they combed through the scenes pausing them. These weren't only math references, there were also references to historical figures and other brilliant minds, like this Anatoly Karpov lunchbox that appears in the episode Bart the Genius. The writers said in an interview that they were baffled by the dedication of the show's viewers, who found every single reference and math gag they put in. One example is the Bill James historical baseball abstract, a classic that only the most ardent of baseball connoisseurs would know, which appeared in the episode Money Bart on Lisa's lap. The book was discussed on forums minutes after the episode aired. This is another freeze frame gag that is easily overlooked. You may know the number called Google, 10 to the 100th power. A gigolplex is a mind-bogglingly huge number. 10 to the Google power and the writers used it as a nerdy answer to the question, what should the Springfield cinema be called? In the episode Marge and Home Return a couple play the spectators of a baseball match are asked to guess how many people there are in the stadium and offers three numbers. They aren't any ordinary numbers, however. Each of them belongs in an extremely rare category of numbers. Mersenne primes, perfect numbers, and narcissistic numbers, and the writer Jeff Westbrook put them there for any number files out there. Thank you for watching.